Hello, and welcome back to Alley Bakes, where I am attempting to bake my way through the Le Cordon Bleu Pastry School textbook. We are over halfway through our biscuits and small cakes chapter, and today we have finally found our first proper cookie recipe. They will be chocolate chip walnut. I'll be honest, I'm a bit of a chocolate chip cookie purist. Once you start adding walnuts and other ingredients, they start to feel a little too uppity for my blood. So to balance that out, I am wearing my Crocs today in protest of these fancy chocolate chip cookies. Jumping right in, we've got 100 grams of unsalted butter and 100 grams of brown sugar going into a stand mixer. After that, I was instructed to add 40 grams of icing sugar. Never used icing sugar in a chocolate chip cookie before, but we're here to try new things. Our two kinds of sugars and butter got creamed together until thoroughly combined. After that, a single egg joined the party and I absolutely didn't get any shells in the batter which is honestly a big win for me. I'm gonna work on the one-handed crack next. Scrape, scrape, scrape the sides of the bowl. And then come the dry ingredients, 150 grams of plain flour. We have a very nondescript pinch of salt and an equally nondescript pinch of baking powder. All of this was mixed on medium until just combined because I did not want to overwork my flour and have dusty, crusty cookies. Next, we have our dark chocolate chips and walnuts, 100 grams of each. Now, if you look at the picture of the cookie in this textbook, they clearly chopped both of these very finely. I was not instructed to do so, so I did not. I just stirred them into the batter. And now the obligatory taste test. Now this recipe does not include vanilla, which I was very shocked by. If you're a French book and you're going to try to recreate an American chocolate chip cookie, you would think vanilla is the one thing you would include. Um, and it was definitely absent in my taste test. We're scraping the cookie dough out onto some cling wrap with the goal of rolling it into a perfect cylindrical burrito so we can chill it for 12 hours. So far, so good, I thought. It looked like standard cookie dough, maybe lacking a little bit of that color, again, from the missing vanilla, but I wrapped that bad boy up anyway and did my best uh, Chipotle employee impersonation. Now my little cookie dough log was very soft and it said we were supposed to chill it for 12 hours in the fridge, but we don't have that kind of time. So I did about three hours in the freezer instead. Now, oddly enough, the Le Cordon Bleu Pastry School textbook does not tell you what you're supposed to do while you wait to keep yourself occupied. So uh, I did this. And wouldn't you know it, it's a whole three hours later. I walked over to retrieve my cookie dough log from the freezer. Apparently the reason that you chill dough is to solidify the fat in your cookie so it doesn't spread as much while you bake it. Uh, this thing was hard as a rock, so I felt like I really accomplished my task in a fourth of the amount of time. And now I was to saw the log into 12 seven millimeter pieces. I didn't feel like breaking out my ruler, so I was really just eyeballing it. And of course they came out 12 different shapes, but they were all vaguely similar. It was hard to cut because it was cold, but it was also hard to cut because it had those huge chunks of walnut and chocolate chip that I had to saw through. And I think all the manhandling I had to do to get my bread knife through this cookie log kind of compromised the structural integrity of some of the cookies. I did make it through to the end of my log but the last cookie I kind of had to Frankenstein together because it had fallen apart so much. But he is special and I love him just the way he is. These weren't exactly round because of the way the log sat in the freezer, but I was pretty optimistic that they were gonna taste good, so into the oven we went. Just be normal. Now the book said these would bake for seven minutes. I knew that was a lie because my cookies were ginormous. 
I guessed 15 minutes, they were in there for 16. When they came out of the oven, they were a little pale on top and a little brown on the bottom. By no means were they burnt, I just think because of their size, they didn't cook as evenly as they could have if I had cut them thinner and more evenly. But they looked and smelled like pretty standard chocolate chip cookies. Again, the hope of photo accuracy to my textbook was, was long gone because I didn't chop up those chocolate chips and walnuts, but I wasn't instructed to and I thought they would be mad if I did. So we have big chonky cookies. It's always a good sign when they hold together. When you transfer them to the cooling rack, that means they are not too soft or underbaked. And there you have it, our bastardized chocolate chip walnut cookies. I'm just gonna say that these are American style with the chocolate chips. In my opinion, there's only one way to enjoy a chocolate chip cookie, and that is with an ice cold glass of almond milk. So I poured myself a mug and got ready for the taste test. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but toot toot, they were baked perfectly. This was the kind of food that it took me a minute to figure out what it tasted like. I was certain that the texture was correct, but the flavor eluded me in terms of descriptive words. So much so that I had to mow down on the entire cookie before I could really compose my thoughts. It tastes like the ghost of a chocolate chip cookie. Like, this cookie died and it's wandering around haunting my house. And I think it's because there's no vanilla in it. Like, the texture's there and you can smell the chocolate. And like, I don't know, like everything is seemingly in order, but there's like a crucial flavor that is missing even when you smell it. And I think it's the vanilla. It's like, it would be really good if I never had a Toll House chocolate chip cookie before. That's how I feel. I'm so mean for the rest of this though. Even though these cookies tasted like they didn't have a soul, a cookie's a cookie, and I give it a 6 out of 10. I'll see you guys next time.